Hello, I'm Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at picking up objects. Specifically, how to make it look like that object doesn't jump out of place when the hand reaches for it. Then we're going to take a look at facial puppetry, and after that we're going to go into a rather extended session of Studio Max, where we're going to look at hooking up some locomotive, piston-driven locomotive wheels. And what that does will show you wiring parameters, pivots, links, things like that. And when you learn things like that, then there's a lot of things you can do when it comes to making props. I want to thank you very much for joining me. we got a lot to cover, so let's get started. I've been getting questions about picking objects up. Now, we're not talking about the actual motion of picking it up or whether you're picking it up high or low, but actually lining the object up with the hand so it doesn't jump when you pick it up or to make it look like you just jostled it a little. Well, it's really pretty simple. And what most people have told me, they're actually overthinking it. If you do it like this, where we use two objects in visibility, then you don't have to worry about it because you've placed one object exactly on top of the other. So what we have here is, in Gwen, we have another rose, where I've simply just turned off the visibility. And what I've done is I put that in her hand first, then I go down to where the end of the motion is. Then I place the second object, either exactly where this object is right now, or maybe a little above or a little below, so it looks like it was jostled a little when you picked it up. So then all you do once you get down that far is you turn your visibility off on one, on on the other. There's really not that much to it. And this is what it gives you. We're going to take a quick look at facial puppetry. So let's go to animation, facial animation, let's open up the puppet. Now for those of you that aren't familiar, let's clear everything. That's what this eraser here does, it clears selections. These little areas that change color, you can select one or any combination of them. And that's what you can manipulate. So let's go ahead and select the chin, and this will just show you what I'm talking about. Hit preview, and as you can see, moving the mouse up and down that moves the jaw. So what we're going to do here, it's probably going to be in a very exaggerated and slower motion than we'd normally use so you can follow. But let's do something where like he reacts to something, like his, he opens his mouth wide, his, his eyes open wide, uh, and perhaps his lip curls, something like that. So what we want to do is hit record, we're back at the beginning, open the mouth by moving the mouse down, close the mouth. Now it's very important that we go back to the beginning. Because we're going to do this in passes, just like we do on our other puppet. We don't have to do everything at once. Also, remember to clear your selection. Now, we want his eyes to go wide. I'm going to select all three across here. Now, you'll notice when you preview, you don't see the, the previous recorded action. Don't worry about that. That's just during the preview. When you record, it'll be there. So, we're going to hit record, hit space, and move up, move down. Now I like to also add a little curl to the lips. Let's go back to the beginning, clear. And I use these nostrils right here to kind of curl that lip. So let's do that. Up, down. Now it's a little slower coming down so you'd see a little more of the curl. Remember to go back again, clear. And let's see what these do with the cheeks. It'll give us a little bit. We'll move, move up. So let's hit record up, down. Now, you'll notice right there we move down and it put him in a frown. We can also hit record and go right back up. Okay, now we've closed that. And we can also take it another step from here. We can go to motion and we can go in here to like our own G5 male pose. This is just a pose. I'm going to go down past his expression so right there. Now let's make it where his mouth's a little wider. I'm going to click on avoid. Now this is strictly a pose, so he just kind of popped into motion there. We're going to go and adjust that a little bit. Here's the motion. We're going to slow it down by pulling out this transition handle. And we're going to move it more to the beginning. That's a little too slow. 
So we'll speed it up by shortening it, move it forward. This is just personal preference. And you just keep working on that. Something else you can also do, go to actor, look at cam. And you just keep tweaking this till it gets a little better. But you can see that's the basics of using a puppet and then just running on in and using pose to pose to get a simple pose. What we're going to do in this advanced segment is hook up these piston driven wheels using uh, links, constraints, and wiring. Then we're going to go ahead and export that uh, into 3D Exchange and then into iPhone. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to select this wheel, and what we're going to do is use this steering wheel I created out of Spline to actually drive the animation. So we're going to actually create a rig for this. So I'm going to right click, wiring parameters, transform, rotation. Y, I'm going to select my steering wheel, transform, rotation, Y, select the arrow going back the other way, and connect. This steering wheel now drives this wheel. Now I want this wheel to drive this one, so I'm going to select it, right click, wire parameters, transform, rotate Y, select the wheel, transform, rotate Y, make our connection. Same thing here, select the wheel, wire parameter, transform, rotate, Y, select the wheel, transform, rotate, Y, connect. Now let's select rotate, and you can see what we have here. The steering wheel is now rigged to operate all three wheels. Now we're ready to hook up the rest of it. So we're going to select this front pin, and what I'm going to do with it is just use the link, and I'm going to link the pin to the wheel. Then I'm going to grab this drive bar, and I'm going to link it to the pin. While the drive bar is still selected, I want you to come over here to uh, your links, and we're going to effect pivot only, we're going to center it. It's not going to move much, but we need that to be centered perfectly. Now we're ready to go ahead and align so while that's still selected click on align click on this pin we want to do all three hit apply now everything should be back here hit ok now what we've done is link that like that now here's one thing I forgot to do and that was to restrain how this steering wheel will move. I can do that with link info and what I'm going to do is restrain its X and Y rotation. This way no matter what axis I grab it on it's still going to roll the same way. Now let's go ahead and hook up the rest of it. We're going to grab this pin. I'm linking. I'm going to link it to the wheel. I'm going to grab the drive bar. Come over here to motion. To rotation. Assign controller. We want to look at constraint. Add look at target. We're going to add this pin right here. Then we're going to keep the initial offset. Now we should be linked up. Okay. Now all that's left is to grab the center pin and link it to its wheel. And now we should be ready. And all these are hooked up and ready to go. Now we're ready to go ahead and animate this. So let's move all the way down to the end, hit our auto key, grab our wheel, and if we want this to be loopable, we're going to have to be very careful about how we do this and make sure that we go around at least one complete move and stop, or two or three. You'll see it change color, but make sure you stop right where right even, or you're not, you're not going to be able to loop is the problem. And I'm having difficulty with that because so I'm going to roll back one. There we go. I was going off screen was one of the reasons. So now we have that animated in. Now if you want to do a forward and reverse, just come over here and grab this last key and let's move it to about 250. And then let's grab this first key, hold down shift. Didn't copy it, hold on. Hold down shift. 
move it to the end and set this back to frame one and now we have forward and reverse so we're ready to go ahead and export we want to make sure that we have our animation checked don't worry about any warning and now we're ready to go into 3D Exchange. Okay, now, you will notice that this is what happened with our steering wheel. So what we need to do to keep that from happening is the simplest way is just to go back to Studio Max, grab the wheel, and just delete it. And now we can go ahead and export again. And now we don't have to worry about that. And what we want to do here is let's add another perform because this is actually two different motions if you'll remember. So we're going to make this first one 1 to 500 which was backwards. At least I think it was. 50-50 chance, probably wrong. This one will be forward. And it's going to be 500 to 1000. Now we're ready to go ahead and export. Make sure we export animation. Now we're ready to go into iClone. Go down to where we exported it. And there you have it with the animation. Now you notice that's kind of rough. If you want low poly, you're kind of stuck with that. But if you want to be a little better than low poly, you can always come in here, grab all of these, and add a mesh smooth. And change that to a classic output. And it'll look a lot smoother. The problem is, you've doubled your poly. Now we'll go ahead and export this out. And you can see how it looks a whole lot better. Now I'm not going to go ahead and put these motions back in there. I'm just going to export it out again with the animation. Back into iClone. And there you have a much smoother set of wheels. The only problem being you're now at almost 10,000 poly to get it that smooth. But this is how you go about linking, hooking. You can make a lot of props when you can do this. Well, we've blown through another 15 minutes. It sure doesn't take long with topics like this. I appreciate the feedback you've given me on my first couple of shows. And no, this is not going to be the end of my extended tutorials. In fact, I'm working on a photo facial fitting tutorial right now. So I will continue to do those along with these shows here. So once again, I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate you joining me. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you.